welcome to a very special Christmas episode of the MBS Show Reviews. Well, it's past Christmas and so on, but still, I do hope you guys at home enjoy your holidays and spend time with your families and friends and also get some awesome good stuff. I know I did, quote unquote, because this is the past and I got no idea. Hmm. Well, anywho, joining me today is Silver Quill. Oui, monsieur. Je m'appelle Pan. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Omelette du fromage. Oh, oui. <laughs> I don't want any cheese. Now give me my wine. <laughs> and also joining us is Sapphire Heart Song. Give me my wine. This. <laughs> uh, I don't think you're at the right age to drink. I need more than just one drink for him, and I need a whole entire bottle. Oui, monsieur. Euro Disney. <laughs> I am not a monsieur, you uncultured swine. If you're going to impersonate a French person, do it right. I surrender? No, no. That's Italian. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no, no. Italian is, I, I switch sides. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. There's so many wrongs with this. I know, no, no. So, anyway. In... There, there are many references. And then there's Germans. We welcome your refugees with open arms. That's how you're supposed to do it, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh God, no. Ah, but anywho, uh, why are we going with your period this week? Uh, there's a good reason, there's a good reason. And said reason is, um, in this episode of the Mystery Reviews, we will be reviewing the Miraculous Ladybug Christmas Special. A Christmas Special Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. A quick backstory about Miraculous Ladybug. It is started off as a toy project so it was going to be a 2d project but they turned that one down so they hired some koreans to make a show for the french to be dubbed by the english but in all honesty it was dubbed in all three languages korean french and english but still it's a very multi still what was what you say multicultural yes thank you multi-ethnic yes also thank you so a lot of multi-syllabic <laughs> Yes, so a lot of countries have this show, and in all honesty, I've seen all three dubs of this show, and I have to say the French dub is really good, but season two came out, and, uh, and it's all in English, so yeah, whatever. Uh, I'm not going to complain there. Before we head in, I want to gauge the room for a bit, because like I mentioned before, I've seen all of season one, and what's available for season two and i highly enjoy it i like it silver how about you man have you seen anything besides the one that we're going to do today no i have not i went to this completely cold turkey and so a good part of my viewing experience was like who are you who are you what's this what is that oh my god what is that why are you doing that oh 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 what oh why why am i seeing this but then it prompted me to at least read a little bit on the wiki so i can understand what's going on I was fascinated to learn that the 2D was abandoned because of Ladybug's costume. Oh, really? No. Well, you guys know, in a 2D animation, when a character wears something like a plaid pattern, mm -hmm. if I remember right, this was what? Yes, chowder. chowder. I love chowder. Well, you know that because everything has like plaid patterns, when characters move, the plaid really messes with your eyesight. Yeah, and I think I did that in uh, my drawings way back when, where there's a static pattern and if you want to move the clothing to make it look realistic, it ain't going to work. <laughs> it ain't. So with Ladybug's uh, bodysuit, which is just red with black spots, the spots would have moved all over and probably would have looked very confusing or maybe even an eyesore. So they switched to 3D animation where you can animate the, the suit and the dots will remain static or at least move with her. I think that created a more unique look. I totally agree with that one because the Ladybug outfit is very iconic. Like, I don't think there's any others like her before this. So, hey, I could be wrong here. I could be wrong. Probably there's some Marvel or DC villain called the Polka Dot. <laughs> oh, boys. But still, um... Actually, there is. There's the spot. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's see here. I, I'm pretty sure... Let's see here. DC villains... The spot. <clears throat> All righty then. <clears throat> so that's your take on it, Silver. Um, Seppi, what about you? Um, have you seen any? I did not like the show. Oh, um, like I've 
definitely seen a few clips of it. I I don't know. I can't get into the show as much as I probably should have, and that is a completely unpopular opinion, and I'm going to get lots and lots of hate in the comments. Mm. I don't know. I just could never get into the show, and I guess my views on this uh, special were a little skewed and whatnot. I don't like the characters that much. So, going into this, it's it's not going to be a positive experience, or at least not completely. Um, one thing that I've noted that made me roll my eyes just slightly a bit more, yet slightly surprised me, the voice actor for one of the characters, uh, Adrian, I think his name is, mm-hmm. is Bryce Pappenbrook. And for all you anime fans, he has the the Kirito Kun friggin' demigod Gary Stu, Aaron Yeager from Attack on Titan, uh Blue Actress is um Rin. Actually I liked Blue Actress about that. Oh. Good positive thing. Bottom line is this guy is basically the main character in every sing in every single friggin' shonen anime that I've seen in recent years. Taking the backseat, so that's actually refreshing for me. All right, that's interesting perspective. I I watch a lot more anime nowadays. <laughs> All righty then. And as for me, like I mentioned before, I'm I'm just gonna make it this quick. I uh, I've seen all 26 episodes of the season one mostly in Korean, then French, not in English, and then season two is all in English. So, yeah, uh, it's been a topsy-turvy thing for me, and I like it. The Christmas special for this one, oof, that's going to be interesting. So let's not dilly-dally and let's get right into it. So if you guys at home have not seen this but is interested in watching this, uh, please go do. And also I need to note that this episode, once again, is uh, a Patreon sponsored video by Master of Lag. Thank you, my friend. Um, I think this is going to be one interesting episode. So, anywho, um, we're going to give you guys at home time to watch it. Also, we'll give you time to look up the Marvel supervillain, The Spot, who appeared in Amazing Spider Man. Yeah, I've seen Peter him. Peter Parker. Oh God, Silver. The, the spectacular Spider Man. So, yes, there is a villain named The Spot. And you know, honestly, uh, uh, nah, man, like, Ladybug's still good. <laughs> honestly, I think he should appear with Wolverine and the X Men. You know, X marks the spot. <laughs> oh, God. I approve of your pun, sir. <laughs> You'll probably be the only few saving graces that is this review. For Shizzle, my grizzle. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> and welcome back. So we start off. <laughs> so we start off this Christmas special with song and dance, yay! So everyone in <laughs> I'm dead inside. In France, I'm good. I was in Paris. I was supposed to say okay, Paris. You know what? The word "everyone in Paris goes to Marinette's shop" is questionable. <laughs> so, anywho, um, everyone of Marinette's friend goes to her shop to buy cakes, Christmas cakes, and whatnot, and also, um, at the same time, too, including the. That's not a word of the series. Sorry. Yes, everyone, everyone, um, buy cakes and also, uh, give some donations to the homeless. The yeah, I think uh, from what I can see here is charity for the orphans to give them money to buy toys. Yes, yes. I will say this makes these people really dumb. You have our two lead heroes in disguise, and she's wearing a body tight outfit with a red mask that just covers her eyes, and she's standing right next to it. It's almost like she's daring the world to pay attention, and the world is not meeting the challenge. You know what, Silver? I I I saw that and I was oh, okay. Nobody noticed it, but I'm going to go for the fact that hey, they're put they're putting on a mask. Nobody noticed it. It worked for Clark Kent. It worked for who else? <laughs> um, Supergirl. It didn't work. 
who worked for Green Lantern in his movie, which was one of the few <laughs> redeeming things about his movie. No, cool. it's like you—you you think co- covering your eyes is gonna disguise your identity from me? I—I I know you, <laughs> and it's just like you people are dumb. Americans are supposed to have the market cornered on dumb. You do not get to take that from us. <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> okay, that's that. Oh, uh, boys. But no, man. No, okay, uh, putting that aside, um, everyone. I don't know if I can. <laughs> Counting that back to the review, everyone went to Marinette's um, bakery to buy stuff and also donate to charity. And uh, a big gruff monkey dude comes in. Uh, to buy. Also, why is she named after a puppet? <laughs> you know what? If we're going to question all the naming convention in this show, it's going to be. You know what? So no, no. So it's uh, what can you say? In this family, there are no strings attached. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anywho, um, carrying on. Big monkey guy comes in, uh, buys cake and also donates. And Big Monkey Guy here is Adrian's bodyguard. And I can see where this is, uh, this gets confusing for people who have not watched the show, like you, Silver. Um, first opinion about this guy. What did you think? Thank you, Lurch. Did they mention about this guy, like, oh, you're Adrian's bodyguard. Here, I have something for him. Like, did that highlight it for you or no? Well, uh, I understood right away that if he's a bodyguard, that means this Adrian fellow must be very wealthy. Uh, and probably of importance. Honestly, the guy, the, the guy, he seems like a big old teddy bear. He's not glaring at everyone. He just, uh, he's just gruff. And he's well designed because this very, well, everyone else are these slender, uh, toothpicks. Key square, uh, design that really makes him stand out from the group. Hmm. And so I thought it was pretty a fun introduction and, I think it's the hat that makes him semi-adorable in, while trying to look tough. It's like, I don't want to fight him, I just want to hug him. <laughs> and also, uh, <laughs> talking about big gruff guys, uh, Marionette's dad is also big too, so just to point that one out. Well, let's see here. Marionette's dad, he's big, but he has more rounded features. So he's got an overall square, but it's rounded corner square. Mm, all right. So yeah. you can tell he's big, big and tough, but he's not intimidating. Mm, all right, all right. Actually, because his head is so tiny, he looks a little disproportionate. <laughs> oh. It's like Leonardo at the end of the latest Ninja Turtles. Just like, whoa, what, mut- <laughs> what mutagen did you fall into? <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, um, we hit to Adrian's mansion. and Oh, oh wait. Sorry. I, I'm sorry, Norman, but you, you kind of skipped an important scene. Oh, what scene would that be? Marionette has a present for Adrian. Ah, yes. And she can't find it. And then, oh, my God. <laughs> What is that? What is that? Why is it called Tiki? What is that thing? Context, yeah, that please. Yeah, that was my reaction. Like, the, the hell? What? Why? I just, I just like, what, what, what is this? Th- we, were, we were having such a <laughs> nice semi-normal time with these CG people. And then there's this thing. What is this thing? I mean, you get the idea within, like, five minutes later, but at the same time, yeah, I I was in the same boat as you. What is that? And no, get away from me. (laughs) Oh, it is, ma'am. What is up with this shiz Oh, well, okay, now, um, in all honesty, yeah, uh, I I forgot my first time reacting to this, but if I were to, quote-unquote, remember how I saw this, like, Oh my god, is that your uh, creature like Kero from Cut Captain Sakura? Okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, probably I freaked out at first, but I'm so used to it by now. <laughs> Wannabe anime mascot incoming. Yeah. Uh, but still, <clears throat> after Marinette gets her gift and gives it to the bodyguard, um, bodyguard goes back home. And we are greeted to Adrian's mansion. And yeah, Adrian here is decorating the Christmas tree. And this is his first time celebrating Christmas without his mom. I think his mom passed away. Sad. I am back. Kick him the head. And he's decorating the tree with the most boring ornaments I've ever seen. 
It's all white ornaments on white lights on a Christmas tree. Okay, I'm going to go on a limb and say that this family is very white. <laughs> it's like I, I realize this is kind of the pot calling the kettle whitey, but <laughs> what's what's French for cracker? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, well, <clears throat> but no, no, man, like, he's sad, like, he's decorating the tree, and he asked um, the secretary, like, um, is dad coming around, because, like, I'm, I'm kind of lonely here, and secretary says, uh, not yet, he'll be ready soon, and Adrian takes this as, oh, he's not coming, I, I'm gonna go and sulk in my room. There is no communication in this show. Why is there no communication in this show? Because they're rich. Who cares? Does nobody know how to do basic human functionalities in the show? They're rich. Well, they know how to... not, or else this friggin' special would not exist. But the, you know, the father knows how to dress himself in all white. <laughs> Oh, we have a red tie, if I remember right. But anywho, yeah, talking about the fighters. Oh, yes, a red tie that fixes everything. And red pants, by the way, red pants, don't forget. Mighty whitey. (laughs) Uh, Secretary comes in telling that Adrian um, is out there feeling lonely, and I think you should go see him. And father says, yes, I'll do so. I'll, um, I'll do so somehow. Yes, I will go see my son. And in Adrian's room, we get to see him sulking, and we get to see, uh, wow, who's this? Um, plague, yes, the the v. black cat plague, thing. yes. We get to see plague, and were you guys surprised at plague? Like your first reaction to him, Silver, was it like Tiki? Well, Tiki kind of blunted it. It was more the transformation sequence that got me, because he's all like claws out. Okay, that's kind of a cool transformation. Oh my <laughs> god, what? What are you doing? <laughs> posing like that. Stop it! You're like a, what, 14-year-old boy? Don't go in skin-tight leather and strike that pose. This I, is I, wrong! I, I now see why Brace Pat Pinbrook decided to go in this. He probably thought it was an anime. <laughs> oh. You people are weird! Stop dressing the four... <laughs> Stop dressing four... Girls in body suits. Uh, I have to <laughs> say something. Um, Their ages are around... Quote unquote 13 to 15, I'm sure. That's ah! <laughs> <laughs> I just like, what? Uh, what? Uh-huh. So, anywho, um, with that, uh, Adrian transformed into Cat Noir, the other half of the show's uh, protagonist. And he goes out sulking, being all emo, uh, sing, sing, singing, by the way. Um, I forgot to mention that this episode contains singing. Lots of singing. But more than that, he's like going up to the rich girl's house and like pressing his bodysuit against the window. It's like, stop that! <laughs> stop trying to flash these people who don't hear this person singing outside. <laughs> Silver, what was it? What are you doing? Silver, what was it? You're sick! <laughs> Silver, what was it that you mentioned in your um, review? Like, uh, something about the song? What was that thing that you mentioned? Oh, uh, that what well, it can abridge uh, storytelling or allow a character to flesh out their introspection? Something like that. Yes, you mentioned that. So, this is what I'm thinking. <laughs> this is what I'm thinking, but basically he's just saying, I'm a lonely cat. I'm an angry cat. I'm a vengeful cat. We get it. You think you're a cat. That bell around your neck makes you look like a BDSM enthusiast. <laughs> and you're 13 to 15. You're sick! <laughs> get back on track. It, it reminds me of one scene. Wee, wee, wee. <laughs> I'm just trying to drive Norman into a conniption at this point. <laughs> Uh, but then he's like, is he like, I'm gonna destroy this Christmas tree because I'm in a bad mood, so I'm just gonna destroy everything. Mm. I'm a yeah. little kitty. Meow, <laughs> meow. <laughs> yeah, really. What was with all the freaking vandalism? Because Cat Noir is feeling emo ish. And before he gets the chance to strike the final blow with his cataclysm, get it? Cat! <laughs> Kill me. Actually, I kind of, I kind of like that. I thought that was funny. I know you should hear the French and Korean dub. It's much more pronounced. <laughs> hmm. 
Ah, but anywho, getting back on track, uh, before he gets a chance to deal the final blow, he remembers his mom. A flash of his mom's image appears in his mind, and he decided not to destroy the tree, instead destroying some kind of billboard. Yes, billboard. Destroying commercialism at holidays. Are we back to Twilight and Applejack? <laughs> probably, probably. Didn't it have his face on it? Yes. Oh, by the way, um, Adrian here is a fashion model. Oh, God. <laughs> what? So, fashion model who dresses in all black with body tight suit with a little bell on his neck. <laughs> Going around and pressing himself up against windows try, and having flashes, which, thanks, Norman, I really wanted to vision this guy flashing stuff. I just... Wow! Oh, God. Oh, and he's voiced by the number one friggin' shonen anime of 2012. Oh, wow. Well. <clears throat> I'm, I'm playing this up. <laughs> but when the first time I saw Cat Noir, I was like, What? <laughs> Yeah, I I would stick to the shadows. I wouldn't want to be seen like that. <laughs> I think I I had the same reaction to you, Silver, but it's grown on me. Uh, but anywho, also the eyes are creepy. Hey, they're playing with the cat motif. It works. I don't care. It's so creepy. But anywho, once Cat Noir decides to stop this, he demorphs, and we get to see Plague here being all. Oh, I'm at my very limit. Oh. Please, oh, I can't take it anymore. And with this, Adrian panics and looks for something to keep Plague warm and also try to feed him something. And he opens the present that the bodyguard gave. And it's a Christmas hat. Oh, ain't that cute. And in said Christmas hat is a message. And message is from Marionette saying that, Hey, happy holiday. Uh, I like you very much. Please notice me, senpai. It's like, oh, I love him so. He's my number one boo, even though he doesn't recognize me. Yeah. Just because I'm... And I don't recognize him. We're dumb. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, and... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm being so critical. It's just this... This Christmas special hits you basically double barrels the entire show continuity all at once. So if you're coming in cold turkey, all of this is like, what? 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 Agreed. And I I am very happy that I did this. It's one of those scenarios where I know that something insane is gonna happen. Let's see where it goes. And yeah, um in all honesty, context, like you need a full context for what's going on. Um characters, scenarios, names, the whole premise of the show. But going cold turkey is a lot of fun. So yeah, let's continue on. Uh we see that Adrian's dad is going to give him a present. And when he goes into his room, he's not there. Noticing that the window is open, he thinks that Adrian's missing, ran away. Oh Oh. my god, he's been kidnapped. No, they didn't say kidnapped. Well, they said find him immediately. Everyone, all the friends they call assume he's been kidnapped. No, no, no. Um... The way that things... You know, all of that, that he, oh my god, he's been kidnapped here. Um, it, at first, no, because from the start, uh, Dino, the guy with the headphones, is uh, Adrian's best friend. Uh, the secretary called him and asked, is uh, Adrian with him? He says no. And the chain reaction of paranoia starts to grow because one person says that is Adrian with you or not? Adrian's missing. What? Adrian's kidnapped? Oh no, we got to find him. Everybody stop doing what you're doing and let's go find Adrian because he's the dream boat. Oh, I love Adrian. So everybody stop what you're doing and go look for Adrian. And here's why I have to say that Adrian here is selfish. Very, very selfish. Well, he is. it is his first uh, Christmas without his mom. I won't fault him for... For be, having the case of the poor me's. Mm-hmm, okay, I can I can forgive that. But here's one scene that uh, redeemed, quote-unquote, his character from being selfish. And that scene is when Santa Claus gets assaulted by some youngins. Those stupid kids. And one wonders what their parents are doing. <laughs> They're taking a camera and recording it for YouTube. No, um, 
I, I believe, like, after, like, Adrian Oso explained that, you know, you shouldn't be doing this crap, they finally step in, but yeah. And here's the worst thing. Adrian doesn't call these kids to be their better selves. He just threatens them that the real Santa Claus is watching. <laughs> I was just like, that's, uh, maybe that works for kids because it's just easier to understand, but down the line, you need to start doing things because you want to be a good person. Not because someone is watching over your shoulder. Well, Silver, he is still a 13 to 15 year old. Who dresses in tight leather. <laughs> yeah. But anywho. Maybe that's why I couldn't get into the show. I'm like 20 and I don't want to watch a freaking show about 13 to 15 year olds. <laughs> uh... Yet I watch anime. <laughs> Yeah, but anywho, Santa Claus here noticed that Adrian doesn't seem like a homeless guy and asked if he's lost. You can't be homeless. You look far too white. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And asked if he's lost. And Adrian says, nah, I'm actually having a bad mood. And Santa here says, you know what? Let me sleigh ride you back home. You got your time to think. And so nobody's really meant to spend the holidays alone. So... Let's go, man. Like, I'll bring you back home. And Adrian here says, Thank you, Santa. Uh, by any chance, do you have any food, especially cheese, cabin berry, if you have any? And Santa says, He wasn't begging for food. I believe he, the Santa offered the food. Hmm. Oh, okay. Um, that's good, too. But still... Uh... And though I understand why he's asking for the cheese, it's for his little spirit, sprite, miraculous friend. How weird is it to say... Oh, you're donating food? You wouldn't have to have any fancy smelly cheese, would you? <laughs> maybe, a, maybe a little sparkling water? <laughs> oh, my God. Would you like some cav- Do you have some caviar on hand? I mean, don't people in this part of town do that? <laughs> Apparently. I, I guess. <clears throat> uh, but, still, <clears throat> but still, all the cards are on the table, and apparently Adrian won. Um, all of the things he wants are there, and... We head off to uh, Adrian's home. But before that, Santa has to put his Santa hat on. And Santa hat is drenched in snow. Adrian, being the good guy, um, offers his Christmas hat to Santa, saying that my friend Marionette made this for me, but I think she would be really appreciative if you have it, because Marionette is a really awesome gal. Shipping! <laughs> yep. So... We get to see everybody in town trying to look for uh, Adrian. And Ladybug comes to the scene of the Christmas tree and sees the broken rubble. And assumes that Plague, sorry, assumes that uh, Cat Noir was in a fight with some evil supervillain. And sees the message and whatnot. And thinks that, oh no, Adrian here has been kidnapped by some supervillain. I must save Adrian. Oh, we must do all the good things. Senpai will notice me then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm done with life now. Oh, God, no. Uh, but so, anywho. Senta talks to Adrian. Adrian talks to Senta about, you know, life and stuff. About how Christmas is a time to spend with the family and whatnot. Blah, 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 and so on. So... Fast forwarding to when they reach their home, uh, Adrian rings the doorbell, uh, father sees who's at the gate, and discovers a fat jelly old man, and decides to shoo him away. I'm guessing he's learning this from the school of Mr. Burns. Release the hounds. <laughs> you are with my son. You automatically want money. Go away. But, but I never... No, go away. <laughs> No reason. I know. Logic does not compute in this in this special. Yeah. Just yeah. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's okay. It's okay. Because you know what, Silver? Um I, I think Adrian's dad don't really need to release the hounds because all he needs to do is release the ladybugs. <laughs> and she just starts wailing on this poor guy. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's like Poor, poor Santa. Yeah, and even like, after Adrian says, stop, don't do that. Like, that man's helped me. Like, jeez, Ladybug, you're a jerk. 
you're a bad guy. <laughs> I said so because I'm the main character. Lady, I'm Santa Claus, not some weird BDSM <laughs> guy. Don't try to kill me while in skin-tight clothing. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you people? A lot. <sighs> oh boy, Silver, you're gonna kill me. <laughs> but anywho, talking about oh. killing people, <laughs> uh, we get to see the villain. That's not good. <laughs> uh, talking about killing people, we get to see the villain this time. And the villain, oh my god, Silver, you had the most awesomest reaction to this one. Like, what? <laughs> Hawk Moth, yes. <laughs> All will fear Hawk Moth. <laughs> His one weakness is bright lights. You will be defeated with a giant bug zapper. It's so beautiful. No, Hawkmoth, don't go into the light. Don't go into the light. Oh, Hawkmoth. <laughs> Man, I miss being on the show. <laughs> I'm every week. My cheek hurts. Ow. Oh, great. You like Twilight Sparkle. You've smiled so much. But, but, here's, but here's the dreaded Hawkmoth. Surrounded by his glowing butterflies. Oh, such evilness. Oh, God. Pretty much. Yeah, but anyway. I, I do like, however, that his way of corrupting people is to corrupt something beautiful like a white moth into a black one. An Akuma, he calls mm -hmm. it. And like I mentioned before, Akuma is demon in Japanese. Yes, indeed. Yeah, so, yeah, um, creativeness. Like, uh, <laughs> From the evil hawk moth. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I can't even uh, take that seriously. Yeah, same here. But anywho, uh, Adrian is disappointed but with everything because uh, his favorite superhero, uh, which is Ladybug, beats beat up Santa Claus, and he goes sulks in the room. Sulk, sulk, yep. sulk. <laughs> and uh, Santa here is really pissed off with uh, Ladybug saying that, you crazy youngins, back in my days... <laughs> Well, can you blame him? I mean, she wrongfully accused him of kidnapping Adrian and assuming that he was a bad guy when really he was just a guy in a Santa costume. True that, true that. And, you know, he got assaulted. Also true, also Who true. Who wouldn't be mad? Yeah. Mad. And I, I'm guessing he wants revenge. And talking about revenge, the little butterfly, or the Akuma, infects the Christmas hat that Adrian gives to Santa. And we get the scene where Hawkmoth communicates with the Chosen One to saying that, Yo, my slaves, do this for me. Go get the miraculous earrings and ring from Cat Noir and Ladybug. Then you'll be satisfied with your revenge. Aha! And Santa says, Yes, um, black ink covers him. And we get to see the Grinch. Yes. You're a mean one, Santa Claus. Actually, I'm trying to remember. I feel like I saw a similar design for an evil Santa. I can't remember where. It was like a, a video game, I think. Probably. Sounds like Billy and Mandy. Probably. It, hang on, although, hang on. Let me get the one for Billy and Mandy <laughs> real quick. Although, I gotta say, this guy and his, his song, mm. I Am Santa Claus, with a W, oh. and... But he does the same song in this dab. He keeps dabbing. <laughs> I Why know, is that's he... a weird thing. Why was he dabbing? I don't know. Is this, he's like, is this what the young and hip kids get <laughs> jiggy with it? <laughs> oh, God. By the way, I need to say something. The clock says we are 40 minutes in, and this is just a 22-minute special. That's because I spent most of this time going, what? <laughs> <laughs> is that him? It's a vampire Santa. Oh, God. Yeah, it looks similar. I'll be. Oh. Well, shut my mouth. Yep. Well, either way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, Santa here goes assaulting Ladybug back again <laughs> uh, and declares war on her. Uh, he goes to... Okay, here's the here's strange. I, I don't understand what's going on. What's the motive in here on? Um, I'm just going to roll through. Santa Claus goes to Adrian's room, assaults the bodyguard with spiders. Ooh, scary spiders. And uh, Santa says, Yo, Adrian, you're cool with me. We're cool. And I'm not going to hurt you because we're cool. Here's what I'm going to do for you, man. I'm going to take revenge on the world. Yo, you and me, both. Yo, we're good. 
and goes out for shizzle. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Uh, so he goes out assaulting people. Like the one mean girl that Seppi doesn't like, she gets assaulted by cockroaches. Yeah. Well, I don't think anyone's meant to like her. It's class warfare. She's rich, ergo, she must be awful. Yeah, yeah true that, true that. <laughs> uh, but... Well, they showed her nastiness at the beginning of the episode, Silver. It's, yeah, uh... it's true. But then, you know, was... from what I've read up, apparently they have to save her like 24-7. Yeah. Ah, like, so she's in a, she's almost a... every episode. Ah, oh, the dumbass in distress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's there's reasons to it, but I'm not gonna go into in defending. Like, there's more reasons. But anywho, uh, we get to see uh, Ladybug and Cat Noir try to stop Santa Claus, and failing. And after failing, they stumble onto one of Ladybug's biggest fan. I I forgot the name, but anywho, who cares? Uh, and. Cat Noir says, we should go stop him. And Ladybug says, no, we can't do this uh, song and dance. It's not going to work. Let me do something special. I shall spin my yo-yo and activate my super special awesome powers. Lucky charm. And I got a box. A cereal? Nope. I got no idea. What? What is They're this? Magically sp- delicious. <laughs> so, uh, there's a lot of backstory I need to talk. But okay, I need to point something out. We're doing this for fun. We're not pure Ladybug fans. And if there's factual wrongness in this, we know. We know. We're just... Well, apparently, she, sorry? apparently she's got plot convenience vision as the items she needs are highlighted in the Ladybug pattern. And uh, apparently her this this fan, Alia, mm, thank you. is... Uh, uh, she's totally cool with Ladybug just dashing and taking her stuff. After... Ladybug and Cat Noir land up on her rug, one piled on top of the other, and it, in body tight outfits. And I'm sorry, I just they, 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 they're too young. It's not what it looks like they say. <laughs> There's th- this is far. They're far too young for this slander. But anywho, um, after... I, just, I don't know what to do. I I need an adult. I You're don't going insane, like aren't adult. you, old man? Ah. Are you okay? No, of course not. And besides, I was insane before this started. <laughs> but anywho, after robbing the place. <clears throat> oh my god, sorry. But anywho, after robbing the place, uh, Ladybug and Cat Noir uh, activates their plan to stop Santa Claus. Talking about the Santa Claus, he flies around Perry with his sleigh and metal mooses. And we get to see a present hanging up the Eiffel Tower. And Santa Claus is not happy about this and wants to destroy it. But before he could destroy it, he sees the box was meant for him. And Cat Noir sings that... <laughs> and Cat Noir sings that he's surrendering. Yes, we are both going to give you our Miraculous. Miraculous is in their box. Uh, Hawk Moth says, It's a trap! Yep, they Actually, fall for it anyway. One thing about the ropes used to hold up that Christmas present, when I first saw them... The CG messed with my eyes. I thought they were bones. It's like, oh my god, that is so goth. Yeah, but you want to do something <laughs> even more messed up, Silver? Go ahead. Sit rope. <laughs> Sit rope is actually curtains that Ladybug stole from Alia's place. Yeah, she just sort of ripped it right off. I was like, oh sure, just take that. Like, Merry Christmas, you. That's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is the first time Sweetie Bot has to censor you out, man. Oh, is that is that now? Uh... I did. Well, yeah. Well, if you want to say, Merry Christmas. Yeah, I I, I'm just going to leave both of this in because it's highly entertaining. But anywho. <laughs> sure, to take myself. I tear something of yours, but it causes indecent exposure. Because you're wearing a onesie. <laughs> I'm loving the special, not not because I love the special, but because of Silver's reaction. Can I just like say that now? <laughs> it's like I'd love to convey how much I hate this film, but no, Silver's beating me to it, and I'm okay with that. I just the absurdity of the moment is fantastic. <laughs> What's beating the crap out of Santa Claus? <laughs> <laughs> I think Poor Norman. Yeah, I, fi- I finally done. broke him. I finally broke Norman. You it was broke so him? Uh, I broke him. Oh, broke him. I was going to say, if you broke him, then you're no better than the people in the special. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, God. 
So you want to take over a bit while I finish her laugh? See what you did now? It hurts. It hurts. He cries. It hurts so much. Well, anyway, we get to see what is a pretty good air, uh, acrobatics fight scene. I mean, fair is fair. They do they do their stuff very well, and you finally see what catastrophe and uh, ladybug's uh, special charm, lady charm, was it? Basically, what they're really meant to do, which is purify and then not commit murder. <laughs> Which, going back to My Little Pony and, in this case, Equestria Girls, Ladybug is still a better superheroine than Applejack, who throws okay. benches with old ladies on them. <laughs> like, Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Oh, wow. Well. Oh. Applejack. Wait, when did this happen? Uh, special. Oh, it's one, of the, it's one of the YouTube shorts for Equestria Girls. They are chasing a burglar, and Applejack uh, throws a park bench at him. Is already pretty morally questionable, but there's an old lady sitting on the bench that she also throws. <laughs> but you, you want to know something what? silver? You want to know something silver? Why didn't Applejack do the fussball special, like to one of the? Why girls? are we talking about Applejack in a non-pony special? I don't know because I need an anchor of familiarity <laughs> in this strange and confusing world. <laughs> okay, wait, so anyway, I'm back. I'm back. Said to. Santa is saved, and a hawk moth is like, I'll get you next Christmas, my children, and your little miracles, too. <laughs> yes. Except That's that, not creepy at all. Well, that what's funny is that he's basically saying, I won't try anything until next Christmas. Okay, season two is going to be a while. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh, boy. So, yeah. Uh, thank you for wrapping that up, Silver. So, uh, we get to see Adrian apologizing to his dad about sneaking out and stuff, and uh, Adrian's dad is kind of angry, but at the same time, too, he's at fault for not being there. And they got a phone call. Secretary answers the phone and says, Hey, um, I, Adrian, I think this is for you. Uh, look at the front door. It's everyone. And Adrian says to his dad, Yo, dad, can we have them for a Christmas party? And dad says, You know, I want you to stay home, and this is the most safest thing to do. So, yes. And everyone is there having their Christmas dinner. Yay! And episode Yay. ends. Thank God. <laughs> See, Safi, I'm, I'm being the crazy angry at this. You just seem the angry angry. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I mean, there's not much to go off of. You're healing the show, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, anywho, um, we reached the end. And I think final thoughts are in order. I want to say silver for less because I know I can laugh out my guts out. So, Seppi, what do you think? of this special the logic in the special is completely thrown out the window there goes my brain in the box <laughs> and honestly i can't completely fault that because if they didn't um you know have all this logic thrown out the window then there probably wouldn't be a special and honestly, I can't think of any other solution at the moment at the top of my head over how to make the special better but, I don't know, I never really had an interest of trying to see what the show was about, but I don't think that I'll be coming around anytime soon. Especially after this weirdo fiasco of a special that I just witnessed. Yeah, but Seppi, um, isn't this show kind of quote-unquote popular in the anime cons that are around? Because I know that this show is picking up traction. It's like very, very everywhere. Even the cosplayers are getting into it. Yeah, it's not my thing. Hmm. I I haven't been to that many anime cons recently, or any actually, in re recent times. I don't know. I know the show is popular. I know a lot of people like it, but I can't get into it, and the special kind of didn't help in any case hmm, all right. for me. All right, all right. So, Seppi, here's a question for you. If you were to give the show the five-episode treatment... Like the first five episodes for this show, not including the specials, would you? It would be three episodes. All right, so three. So would you think that you'll give it a chance? If I had to, and if I was given money to, then maybe. <laughs> All right, good answer. In other words, give me money, and then I'll watch it. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. And well, I, like I said, I'm going to save silver for last because I have a gut feeling that I'm going to burst my guts. So um, for me personally, this Christmas special is weird. From the quote, Weird is an understatement. Yeah, I mean, they were trying to do the whole 
singing thing, like the whole um song for episode thing, like they do in ponies. It did not work in its favor. Yeah, like I listened to this episode in French. I think it sounded good, but it it didn't flow well. Like they were kind of forcing it, and near the end when they were fighting, they totally stopped. Like the only scene where singing was involved was the part where Ladybug was looking for Adrian and beyond that okay if you want to say more singing was Santa Claus with his really really bad singing like I got no idea what's that even with but in all essence this was enjoyable it's harmless it's harmless special it was okay it was just okay and Silver what about you my friend well, my final thoughts are, what? <laughs> I mean, we got tiki spirits coming out of nowhere to get presents and boys dressing up and pressing themselves up against windows and Santa Claus is dabbing before throwing scorpions at you. And then there are these kids for a year around and the boy is wearing leather pants so tight you can tell his religion. Which, which is worse though, Silver? Um, sorry, my dog is barking. Which is worse though, the hunk of the Hug a Bunch movie or this? Oh, they're both wonderful in their own unique weirdness. Here's the funny thing. I feel like I'm reacting this way because I'm coming in in the middle of something. <laughs> I have no context. I'm I'm following behind everyone. And so while other folks are perhaps invested in these characters, they, they have a sense of shared history and they've gotten used to the leather pants. <laughs> if your name is a Yugi Moto, you've got no business wearing leather pants. Indeed. But uh, if I'd probably seen this start, uh, season one start to present, I'd probably be more with it and more gelled. I'd still laugh at the, it is the classic superhero. It is the Clark Kent thing. But here's the thing. With Superman, what was it? Batman, Superman, in the introduction of Supergirl, she comments, no, everyone looks at you as if you're a god. No one would look for you dressed as a human. And that's that makes more sense with Clark Kent than it does here because these are two very acrobatic and uh, skillful a- athletes, but they're not superhuman in that sense. When even these, our lead characters don't even recognize one another when they're transformed, you're just like, really? I mean, really? You Wait, you must be in love because you're clearly not seen him for his looks because it's right there. Uh, but Silver, I have to mention something to that point when you say um, they're not superheroes, like they don't just the mask thing. To comment on something like that, um, Sailor Moon, they don't wear any mask. Like I think the only uh, episode they wear a mask was the first one, just because. And I think the artist got bored with it and didn't even bother to draw in mask later on <laughs> oh it's true although i always i always laugh that no one would look for her because you, you remember ray from uh, sailor moon mm-hmm. she's dressed in the shinto priestess outfit and then she transforms and she's got short skirt and high heels you're like dang ain't nobody looking for those legs <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean really <laughs> i i'm surprised i've never seen a fan art of the sailor since she's saying hey our faces are up here <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and it's just like, it, it is, there are a lot of classic superhero tropes. In some ways, this is a fresh new thing by which I can laugh at the absurdity of superheroes in general. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It is fun. And I apologize to anyone who feels like I'm being cruel or harsh towards this. I played it because this is so new and foreign that it's more fun just to go, what? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's well, nobody can blame thing. you for that. I especially don't. <laughs> But it's like, come on, I watched Kill a Kill. It's like, ah, they're 16. Don't wear clothing like that. And then I go to the, I go to the French. And I'm like, okay, maybe the French will be more conservative by, than the Japanese. Like, no, they're collaborating. Ah. <laughs> that is also true, my friend. Oh, I said, like, ah, what are you doing? Oh, boy. They're kids. Okay, Silver, Silver. You know, they're French, they're I thought you said au revoir. <laughs> Au revoir, mon ami. Oh, well, cool down, Gambit. Cool down, Gambit. So, anywho, Silver, if given the three episode chance, would you do it? Yes, I would watch the first three episodes to gain context and see how everyone is introduced, and wonder do they ever are they ever self aware in their humor? I 
think probably. And here's the thing about this um, show, the way that they arrange it, uh, especially in the French dub of the show, the first episode is the last episode. What? What? Wait, the first, what? So you know how but shows... No, you, just, you just broke my brain. You know, so you know how shows with uh, introductions or character introductions are? Like uh, how yeah. they get their superpowers and whatnot and just, you know, introductions. Like this is how it all started. Ah, uh-huh. if I remember right, in the French dub, it was the twenty sixth episode. So it was the what sixth? would they? What? <laughs> and now you're breaking the Safi. What? It's no, just a... does, does, does not compute. Safi, here's the thing: you you do not compute. I was the one who was invested in this show. I seen all twenty six episodes in. Korean and also French, just because of Does how not cute. Uh, just because of how yeah. things goes or how things are shown. But anywho, I was invested in this, and watching the first episode, I saw and thought, "Huh, okay, um, they're not gonna tell us about how they got their room." Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Norman, mm-hmm. as punishment for breaking me, I'm going to make you watch Wooly Cooly. Oh, for the which is mm, yes. that, that one still que- questions the bounds of uh, what's appropriate, but at least they're not walking around in skin tight clothing. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I don't say they're lighting fires. It's like ah, you're all sick. Uh, Everything is sickness. Take me back to the ponies, even though they're nudists. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know what? I, Double standard, much. Hmm. I don't know. Everything is dark and depressing and skin tight. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. I don't look good in spandex. I can't be a Power Ranger. <laughs> okay, I'm putting that on Twitter. <laughs> 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 but anywho, but anywho, like I was saying, debut episode was strange. And even in the English dub, uh, debut episode came out in episode 15. What? 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 Norman, I'm not even joking. My brain. I'm not even joking, man. I would assume not, but it's it the law. <laughs> oh, but anywho, but anywho, we have been uh, on for a while now. So uh, let's see. Let's see. I've been on for a while. I've been on a screening tirade. <laughs> <laughs> so anywho, anywho, um, and posted. <laughs> so anywho, we uh, this is the review. Uh, I think that's our thoughts on set episode. Uh, I do hope that you enjoy our. Very interesting, quote unquote, review for this show. <laughs> I love uh, the quote unquote review. <laughs> yeah, but anywho, I do enjoy the episode. I do enjoy our review. It's all fun. And well, thank you once again, myself, like for sponsoring this because I think if it wasn't for you, you I wouldn't have laughed so hard. And for that, I thank you for giving me the joy of laughter. Thank you very much. So, anywho, if you guys at home would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com and also coffee.com. With every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusives, and also deleted contents. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank LurkerCat, Namdragatoria, Starstream, Master of Lag, Amy, and also Mark. Thank you so much for the awesome support, guys. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the emotionally scarred Silver Quill. I am Sapphire Heart Song and Silver Cursed in French. <laughs> I don't think you spelled that right. Oh, well. <clears throat> but anywho, uh, happy holidays, guys. I hope you have a good one and please be safe. So, we'll guys see you next time with another amazing episode of the MBS show. See ya. You're sick! You're sick! Yeah. You cursed in French! Uh, hang on, I, yeah. here's my... Because the phrase, holy smokes or darn, what better way to conclude the first than give a damn? <laughs> this phrase and other idioms and slangs cannot give you a good laugh. Uh, basically, Zutalor has no direct translation. It's just sort of, dang, darn, exclamation or frustration. Google Translate says otherwise. Oh, yes, and Google Translate is known for its infallibility.